So hello, everyone, and welcome to today's program, How to Discover or Discovering Creative Commons License Images, Photos, and Videos. Today's session is brought to you by the Washington Research Library Consortium, or the WRC, which is a collaboration of the nine universities in the Washington, D.C. area. The WRLC Textbook Affordability Working Group supports those who want to replace expensive commercial textbooks and open with open textbooks and affordable materials for students. Our team is represented by most of the WRLC universities. So please make note of the contacts here on the slide so that you can follow up with them if needed. And for those of you who don't have a representative listed here, feel free to contact the open at WROC email address here for further support. Let me remove the panels here. And today I will serve as your presenter. My name is Misty Strunell. I am a research services librarian at the George Washington University, as well as the textbook affordability working group representative for GW. And our agenda for today, we're gonna to cover the use of protected works. We'll talk about CC license basics briefly and a majority of the time we'll spend on discovering CC licensed photos, images, and videos. And at the end, we'll talk about guidelines for applying attribution, and we'll take any questions and answers you may have following the presentation. So if you spent any time looking for or incorporating images, videos, and photos into your work, you likely understand that copyright protection is a complex area of law and requires a fair amount of knowledge and expertise in order to confidently apply it. A two-part session will be needed to cover the content, that content, as well as the basics of Creative Commons licensing, as well as spending time on demonstrating how to discover CC license materials. So for today, I'm gonna to recommend that for an in-depth overview of copyright protection basics, as well as selecting appropriate Creative Commons licensing, you all refer to our previously recorded webinars on choosing a Creative Commons license, with all, which also covers the basics of, of copyright law, as well as, as, well as our in-depth workshop on CC licensing. And there you'll find the needed information to be comfortable with selecting copywritten works and how to incorporate those as well as information about the CC licenses. But it is important to be aware of some of the basic rights and permissions that owners and users have of copyright works that are available. As a creator of original works, copyright owners have the right to copy, distribute, create a dis derivative work, publicly display, and publicly perform their works. In addition, they have a right to grant permission to use their work with a license. Licenses can be permitted in various forms, such as a license to allow sampling of music, or a license to allow public display of a movie. So the focus of our, of our discussion and search today will be on Creative Commons licenses. So Creative Commons licenses are a type of copyright license that allows copyright owners to provide upfront permission on how to use their work. 
They are a type of open license because they allow users to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and, re and redistribute works for educational purposes. There are six types of licenses with varying degrees of permission, and they range from the most, per most permissive will be the CC BY license to the least permissive license, which is the CC BY non-commercial, non-derivative license. And you can find more details about that in our previous webinars and recordings. So we're gonna focus on CC BY today. So here's an image or a slide that indicates how you can determine when a image or photo or video actually has a CC BY license. It'll look different in the various places that you'll discover these types of works. It may be a visual icon indicated what you see with, with the letter CC BY and the icon for, in the icon for BY. It may be written out in text as Creative Commons by license, or it may just freely in free text state attribution only. And in some instances, there are no indication or no standard at all, which will require you to do some searching and evaluation to determine what type of licenses ha it has and if it's actually a CC by license. So in the live demo, I think there will be an option for an opportunity for us to see where there may not be a indication of what type of standard is available. So I'm going to actually move away from my slides here and go out to the internet and we'll do a live demonstration here on how to find CC licensed images, photos, and videos. And I'm gonna start with Google image because it's sort of the default place to go to search for images. So you just navigate to Google images as you would if you were searching the web for anything else. And you'll put in your search uh, term. Misty, uh, we can't see your browser. We still see the presentation window. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, you see the, um, can you see it now? There we go, thanks. Okay, all right. So you navigate to Google Images and you put in a search term or the name of an image as you would for anything else you might be searching the web for. So I'm gonna use the example uh, Bloom's Taxonomy as if we wanted to put that, a chart of that in something that we're creating for learning. And I'll do a quick search here and see what we discover. And you'll see here we have a list of results of various types of Bloom's taxonomy images. Right now we have no way of indicating what type of license they actually have. So in order to do so and prevent us from having to try to look through each and see what type of license they have, Google Images actually has a filter available for taking out those that we're, ser we're searching for, which are those with the Creative Commons license. So to do so, you'll use the tools feature that's listed above and the list of results that are available. Click tools, and then you'll have the option to filter the results. One of the types of filter is usage rights. So we'll click that drop down. And Creative Commons licenses is one of the options for usage rights. So we'll click there and filter out any images or photos that are that don't have a Creative Commons license. So here we can be more confident about being able to use one of these images that um, allows us to be able to reuse it in our work. So I'll just go with the first one here. And it tells us that so Google Images doesn't have a collection of these images uh, stored somewhere. So it actually links us out to different websites where we can find the original image. So this, the first one is linking us out to Flickr, which is also one of the places where you can find photos and images. So we'll just go there and visit the Flickr website. And from there, we have full access to the image that we selected from Google Images. 
and we'll just click down here and we can see more information about how we can use and what we can do with the image. So at the bottom right of the image, we see where we could share it out or we can download it and just begin to copy it and paste it wherever we'd like to use it. But in order to determine what type of actual license it has, we need to read down a bit further so we can see what type of CC license it has. Uh, Google Images um, and Flickr as well don't actually allow you to filter down any further and look for only CC by license type material. So we'll have to do a bit of reading and evaluate what type of license it has. So from there, we see where we have the visual icon here for CC by, um, you know, that really doesn't tell you much if you're not familiar with it, but off to the right of that icon, there's a link there that will tell us more about what we can actually do with this image. So if we click it, it says some rights reserved. It takes us to the CC Commons Lite uh, website, and then we can see the full rights and what the full types of permission we have with using this image. So it says that we are free to share and adapt. So if we wanted to make any changes to it, we're free to do that and we can freely share it and redistribute the image with others. But it does request that we use the image with the following terms, which is to apply attribution. So it asks that we give appropriate credit to the person that created the image. So now we have a better understanding of what we can do with this image. So I'll just go back to the image. So, you know, I could download it and then go to work with it from there. But in order to apply attribution, you do have to have some awareness of you need to, you know, where you discover the image. You need to determine who actually created the image and where, who we want to give the appropriate credit to. So uh, you will need to get navigate around where you find found the image and determine who created it. So from here on Flickr, it says this image was created by the Center for Teaching at Vanderbilt University. Uh, and then you can see a bit more about Creative Commons. So this is who we, we give credit to if we decided to use this image. And towards the end, I'll talk a bit more about how to apply attribution. All right, so that's how you find an image. Flickr is actually one of the sites where you can find images as well as photos that you can use freely in the learning materials that you may be developing. So we'll stay with Flickr and continue and we'll search for a photo this time. This is just an image. So this time we'll search for a photo that a photographer or someone may have uploaded for use. So I'll search um, for something a little more generalized this time. And let's say we're looking for a photo of children playing in leaves and see what's available on Flickr. So we have another search here on Flickr. And within Flickr, you can do the same thing. You can search for images that have only the CC or the Creative Commons licenses. Again, it doesn't allow you to uh, granulate down to the CC by type of license. So we'll have to do a bit of evaluation after we find what we're looking for. But right after you conduct your search, above the ads that you see on Flickr, it does have an option or a filter for what type of license you look through or browse through after you get a list of results. So we know we want the Creative Commons license, so we'll click the drop down, and we see that all Creative Commons is an option here. One other thing to be aware of with Flickr, it also has, contains in its collection, photos and images that are within the public domain. So to indicate those, it says no known copyright restriction. That means they're available for free use, as well as those that are created by the US government. Those are also uh, types of works that are free uh, or publicly available. So again, uh, Flickr allows uh, free options beyond just the open Creative Commons license that we're talking about here today. But we'll focus on Creative Commons and we'll click there. So we got the ads again and we click down and now we see options for 
selecting images that are that have a CC license. So we have a 40, 145 here. I'll just click on the third one that's available. And we see the same options here. We can share or download. So this image, well, this is a photo. This photo actually has a different, different type of CC license. So we see the icons here for buy that indicates CC buy. And then we have another icon here that is not always familiar if you haven't, you know, spent a lot of time looking at Creative Commons licenses. So we'll need to click here and see what type of permissions we have available with this photo. So we'll click, scroll down and it says that we are free to share and adapt this photo if we decided to use it. And then it also says that we have a few restrictions for lack of better words that we need to consider when using this photo. So it says we have to apply attribution, give the creator appropriate credit, but it also says that if we share, we need to share this image alike. So this means that we can't make any major adaptations to it. And that when we share the image, it needs to be in a similar format that as in um, the way that we found it. So if you'd like to find more information about all of the actual uh, intricacies of sharing a light, you could click here and it'll tell us more details about it. But this uh, type of license actually has a a bit, it's a bit more restrictive than the open CC by license that we recommend. And one reason for recommending that you seek CC by licenses is because they are the most permissive and they require you to have to make spend less time making decisions about how the image or photo that you found, how it may uh, limit or restrict the ways you can use the learning material after you've created it. So for instance, if you, you if you use an image or photo um, in your works that uh, is a, say for instance, it has a more permissive uh, license, uh, CC uh, ND, meaning that you can't create any derivative of it, that may affect what type of um, repository you share your image in in the future and affect the way that you can distribute your work after after you've created it. So we're recommending CC BY because they allow you to just be have less decision making to consider when you're mixing and remixing and moving um, things around as you create your open education resources. So that's how you use uh, how you search for and discover CC BY licenses, CC BY licensed images and photos. So Flickr is one option that we recommend. Uh, at the end of the recording and when we share share this webinar, we'll have a list of resources available for other places where you can find CC licensed resources, materials, videos, photos, and video uh, and images. So we've searched for so far, we've looked at uh, Google Images for an, Google Images to find an image. And that led us to Flickr where we searched for a photo. And now we're gonna move on and find a place where we can discover video that have CC licenses. So I'm gonna use uh, YouTube or recommend what well, yeah I'll use YouTube as the place to discover video um, it's usually one of the most common places that we might start a search for video so I'll, I'll use that this is an example so navigate to YouTube and just as you would if you were searching for some personal videos you type in the name of a video resource that you may be interested in using for a learning material. So we'll go with Bloom's Taxonomy again and see what type of video is out there for using Bloom's Taxonomy. So just as we would find with Google or any other search engine, we get a list of results. It's a mix of what type of licenses these uh, results might have. So to decrease the amount of time of trying to determine what they have as far as a license, we can filter out and look at only those things that have a CC license. 
So filter, uh, YouTube has a filtered option built in. So we'll click here and look for the filter that allows us to search for or browse the CC license materials only. So under features is where you'll find the option to filter out only the Creative Commons license videos that are uploaded on YouTube. So we'll click here. This will reshuffle our list of results. And now everything below the ad here should be a video that has some type of CC license. So I'll just go with the first one here and see what, what it has, what it offers as far as a license. So with YouTube, it doesn't give you a clear indication right away of what type of license this video may have. So we'll need to click on the details, more of the details and, and scroll a bit or look around a bit to see what type of license this video actually has. So the further down we go, we'll find, so it actually does tell us who created the video. So we'll know who to um, give attribution to. But we look down further and the last bit of information it has here, it actually tells us that it has a Creative Commons license attribution, Creative Commons attribution license. So as we saw in the slide before, um, it tells us what type of license and it doesn't use the icon here. So it, and in parentheses, it says reuse only. So this indicates that um, we can't make any adaptation to the videos if we decide to use it, but it does has a, have a Creative Commons license. And then if you, a CC by Creative Commons license. So if you wanted to know more detail about it, they have the option here for you to click and read and get more detail about Creative Commons and what type of license. So if you read a bit here, it actually says that YouTube allows creators to mark their videos with a Creative Commons by license. So this is one we can feel pretty confident about using and not having to you know, be concerned about how it may affect what we are remixing as far as other images and video in the learning material we might be creating. So it's pretty safe to use this one and know that we can redistribute it without any conflict later. So that's an example of how you would search for video using YouTube and video that has a CC license. So I'm going to stop the demonstration here and I'm going to go back to my slides. And we'll talk a bit about how to apply attribution. Actually, um, I saw someone else was uh, that joined. So if anyone has a question so far, um, feel free to, you know, jump in here and ask a question. And if not, I'll move on and talk about how to apply attribution to materials that we discover. Um, and I'll show, yeah, I'll, I didn't mention this here, but here are a few other resources that you can use beyond Google images uh, for finding images and photos. You're probably familiar with Pixabay. Uh, we, we talked about Flickr and then Wikimedia Commons is also a great resource for finding images and photos. And they do a great job um, on Wikipedia as far as indicating what type of CC license those images have, as well as uh, what your what type of permissions and what you can do with those. With Pixabay, it's a bit more, um, it takes a bit more uh, evaluation to determine what type of license those images have. Um, they are not always indicated as CC BY, but uh, one of the purposes of the development of Pixabay is that it's a resource where open license images and photos can be discovered. So you will have to do a bit of evaluation if you use Pixabay to determine if it actually has a CC BY license on the resources that you'll find, find there. And then for finding other, discovering other types of uh, other resources for discovering videos. Uh, there's Vimeo, one that most people are from, probably familiar with, as well as there's one as Mazway. There's several other, but these are ones that um, have a pretty good uh, 
option for a uh, um, description for indicating if the image is a or the resource is a CC by or has a some type of CC license um, there. All right, so we'll talk a bit about retro attribution here. So as mentioned, most Creative Commons license licenses that uh, creators attach to their work do suggest, do recommend that you give attribution to the creator. Um, there's some difficulty in determining how much or how little attribution or how much little or how much credit you should give to the creators of different types of work. We have a quote here from the Creative Commons website which suggests that you may satisfy the, well states that you may satisfy the attribution requirement in any reasonable manner based on the medium, means, and context in which the licensed material is used. So that can be a bit, you know, difficult to discern about how you should actually give attribution, but there are some guidelines out there for the best ways to provide attribution to a work that you decide to use. So we're suggesting that we use that you use the tassel guideline for determining for giving attribution to a work that you use. And tassel is a acronym for giving the title of the work you use in the attribution. So the title is the actual name of the work. Also indicating the author. So this is the person who actually allows you to use the work. More than likely it's the creator. It may be the creator of the work. Also indicating the source. So this is where you actually found the work. So what website um, and so forth, where did you actually discover the work? And then also indicating the type of license. So how can you use the work or how were you allowed to use the work? So we have an example at the bottom of the slide here on a great way to give attribution to a image, photo, or video that you discover. So here you can see where it actually has in parentheses the title of an image, Creative Commons 10th birthday celebration. And it's in parentheses, so that's the title. We have Timothy Vollmer listed as the author and then it indicates that it doesn't say where it was discovered, uh, but it also says that it has a CC BY license. So that's a great attribution that you can give, that you a great uh, guideline or way that you can give attribution to a video, photo, or image that you discover. So actually, this is the last thing that I want to add here um, as far as how to discover images, photos, and video. It can be a lot to ingest. I'm gonna stop here and see if we have any questions. And if not, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video for today. So um, the webinar, I should say. I'll say thank you and I'll come out here so that I can see everyone and take any questions that uh, people, attendees might have.